Today on QDL, we take a look at the LEXT OLS 5100 3D laser scanning microscope from Olympus America. Built for failure analysis and material engineering research, the OLS 5100 laser microscope combines measurement accuracy and optical performance with smart tools that make the microscope really easy to use. You can precisely measure shape and surface roughness at the submicron level quickly and efficiently. Robert Bellinger of Olympus America uh, showed us the Lex OLS 5100 at their demo lab in San Jose, California. Take a look when we come back. Okay, Rob, so um, what are we looking at today? All right, today we have the Lex OLS 5100. This is a, our next version up from the 5000. It was really a software improvement, and uh, we're going to cover a couple of the major software features that were added to the 5100 in this version. So, And we've, we've looked at the 5000, I believe, before in, in, a, uh, in previous show. Why don't you just upgrade us real quick on, on just basically what the Lex yeah, is? Give you a rundown. So yeah. the Lex is our laser scanning confocal microscope. This system's capable of very high magnification, high resolution imaging, uh, magnifications over 17,000 times. Using the laser scanning, it's able to optically uh, improve magnification. Um, very precise height measurements down in your nan nanometer scale range for you know, step height measurements, volumetric measurements, surface roughness analysis, all capable in the system. And we also have the ability to utilize white light and capture color images along with all of the laser height data and laser images as well on the system. Okay. And so the 5100 is, is, a, is, an, up, is an upgrade from the, from the 5000? That's correct. Okay. So the 5100 is our next version. It was a major software upgrade. Um, the Lex itself still has the flexible platform. This is our 4 inch uh, or 100 millimeter stage system, the smaller frame unit. We also have uh, a system with extended height capabilities okay. for larger, taller parts that need to go under an image. So it has uh, uh, the ability to extend the frame really high with a little larger base platform for stability. And we also have for the mostly semiconductor market, looking at larger wafer sizes, we have the 300 millimeter frame okay. um, with the motorized system on it for the laser scanning microscope. Okay. This is just our demo unit with the uh, smaller frame size. Okay and definitely want to show a couple of the new features in the software, talk about those today, and I guess we can jump right into that, sure. huh? Let's do it. So right off the bat, in our acquisition software, everyone would see a new feature called Smart Lens Advisor. So what we had in the past is a lot of questions, especially when people were doing surface finish or surface roughness testing, they were always asking, do I just have to go to the very highest of magnification objective to get the best results for what I'm looking at on my sample? And they would come back and ask, well, why can't I use a lower mag, get a larger field of view? Is it just as accurate? And we would have to go through the principles of what the lens is capable of and what are okay. you looking for in your sample? Well, they made it a little easier now for operators to use the feature built into the software to advise them how well that lens will work for their sample. Okay. So under here, I just have a, a sample, roughness sample, and um, we can test it by starting, clicking on this, and we start with the 10x objective. Maybe okay. we want to use a low mag objective to think we could get a really large field of view, and we want to see how well it does on our sample. So you move to the spot in your sample, you bring it into focus, you open up the Smart Lens Advisor, be on the objective that you want to test, and hit start. And what it's going to do is test not only the objective resolution and its capability for uh, measuring on this surface, but the scan modes of the system too. If you actually see in the screen here, it says fine, standard, or fast scan. So, so, it's, so it's going through and testing each one of those scan each one speeds of those scan speeds. Okay. to see right. which one's the best and it, will it work with this objective on your sample. So it's evaluating the surface of the sample and testing each one of the scan speeds. And obviously the fine scan speed takes the longest, but it'll give you the best results overall for finer scans. So, so the idea is, is at the end of this, they're gonna get some sort of indication as to whether that lens will work for this particular 
application. That's right. It will give you some measurement results, and it's really oh, here we go. Okay. So after it's done doing the scan, it takes a few seconds to go through seconds to go through that. It gives us some results, and we have one to three stars. And it's got only one star. This objective okay. has one star for the surface finish of this sample is a little too fine for this lens to work well to get you information. And if you scroll over, it gives you some more data and really how many pixel oh. ratio, validate, valid pixels did it get? And it's very low percentage. Yeah, so that's why it's saying only one star. And up here it says, please change to an objective with a larger NA or resolution. Yeah. So that means a higher magnification. So what we can do then is switch to a higher mag lens so we can go to the 20X. The system will change to that and focus for us and we just hit start again to evaluate the next lens. So user might start at the low value and work their way up to get okay. the lens that works best for them and then maybe even go past it. What could happen if they go past it, they get good results on two lenses. Um, they might choose the lens that has good results with the largest field of view or good results with the faster scan speed. Okay. Well, I was going to say, I mean, I, I guess the question would be, well, why wouldn't you just always put it on uh, on the highest uh, on the highest mag just always select you know 50x or whatever and just call it good because at that higher mag it's going to possibly have a longer scan time oh sure okay. and it'll have a much smaller field of view okay view. all right 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 so a field of view matters to you you might want a, a lower a, a lower magnification as long as you get the results as long as you that you get need the results okay. yeah so if you can utilize the 20x lens and have this larger field of view you can get more sampling data over your area right okay so i see on the screen so that so, one got 3 stars yeah so if we look now the 20x gives us 3 stars it says this objective lens is suitable for roughness measurements okay. on this sample under these observations and it's even using the standard scan speed and we can look at the valid pixels are almost 100% 99.4 yeah. almost 99.5 so so if, if so if you went to a to a, a, a higher mag um, you wouldn't expect yeah. it would still get three stars but you Absolutely. probably wouldn't improve things much and you'd have a smaller field of view yep. yeah yeah right two okay. things if we took the time now and went to the 50x and scanned we would get three stars because it's got yeah. more resolution sure, sure. and the problem the difference you'd see though is the acquisition time would be longer oh true that's too true yeah. and you'd have a smaller field of okay. view okay yeah, interesting so there's no need to go past the 20x for this sample yeah. now if you change samples you'd have to run your test over again to see if it's still suitable for yeah. the different material this true. So, so it's also kind of based on uh, now. This one actually has a lot of um, a lot of scratches uh, on it. So, if you had something that was a smoother surface, then you might be able to get by with a with a, a lower magnification. Uh, probably just the opposite. If you had something with more texture, oh. more roughness, right, you could right. get away with using maybe the 10x objective okay, gotcha, for something right. like that. So, this standard's around a 0.2 micron finish. So. Um, if we went to something even smoother, you might only see two stars on the 20X. Oh, and then okay. you can determine, well, yeah. two stars is good for a good reference value, but not, might not be as precise as okay. you need it to be. So you might have to go to the 50X lens on a smoother surface. So this really just, just helps quantify uh, and, and give confidence to the operator that they're using the right objective for, for what they're doing. That's correct. Okay. Yep. So it's, it's cool. giving the confidence to the operator. This objective lens is suitable for the surface they're imaging on and they don't have to worry about going always to the highest magnification. Okay, cool. Okay. The, um, so that's Smart Lens Advisor in the acquisition settings. The next thing to show, I'm gonna actually um, move to a new area and we'll move over to here. And we have a new feature called Smart Experiment Manager. So if I open that software, this is a, an optional software feature that we now offer with the 5100. Okay. This Smart Experiment Manager uses a software tool in here called Experiment Total Assist. It's like an assistance tool for setting up your experiment. Okay. So in the past, we would gather all this data off of an, a, a metallurgical microscope, like the laser scanning confocal microscope here, the LEX. You would scan multiple images on multiple different samples and get a, gather all that data and spit it out and then go have to you know check that data yeah, over right, right, compare right. one yeah. sample to the other put it into a different program or a different document to evaluate a trend so say you're you're creating an, a, an experiment of four different types of samples and you're doing different coatings on the samples over time or something 
and you want to track like a measurement of a width or a step height on that same position on each sample over time. Okay. Okay. You would have to go through the experiment and manually calculate all the information afterwards. But with this assistance tool now, we can set up the experiment like I have here. I set up a really simple one where I have just two different process types, lapping and grinding, and different levels of uh, um, uh, polishing effect, right? Grinding okay. or lapping effect. And you just have a little matrix there. I have a little matrix okay. here that I've already, just to save time today, I've already done four different locations and scanned those in. And this allows us to now continue on and check the next um, values just by clicking into the information that you still have left to do. Okay, so, so you, you would know what your sample, you, you would know that, okay, this is, I'm going to look at the sample from a grinding operation yes. at level point one. That's the one I'm going to measure right now. That's right. Okay. So what's great about this is that sometimes these experiments could take, if you have a lot of samples, could take more than one day. Okay. You know, you spend all your time, you can save this, open it again later, and you still have your prior results, and just, okay. it shows you right on the screen which ones you still have left to do. Okay, gotcha. Oh. And it helps guide you through the entire process, get all the correct data, and then you can see all the trends afterwards. So let's capture the last two, and then we'll take a look at the trends. So I need to go up to my higher mag objective, which is what I used on this sample. And then all I have to do just click the is box. select the box I want, okay. right click on it and say, get the data from the acquisition app. All right. It's going to go back to the acquisition app and I just hit start the scan. It'll go through and capture all of my information. So as it's scanning through, it's capturing um, the set points for high and low and it's capturing all of the height data as it scans through. That's the laser scan is complete. It'll capture a color image as well for us. Okay. And when it's all done, we just hit analyze. That'll drop the information into our analysis software and populate the field here oh, for us. Wow. Okay. So now we have this information on this image. We can come and look at, we're doing aerial roughness measurement. So I can look at my surface average data and I can keep oh, okay. seeing the trend as I go. Rather than seeing the pictures, I can look at my average uh, surface okay. roughness okay. and I can see the trend as it goes between lapping and grinding. Okay. And now I still have this one to fill in. So I will go back to this tab, um, select to acquire data from the acquisition app. It'll bring me back to this. And I need to move to my next location, which is location six. So I'll drive to this location. And we will autofocus, sorry. focus on the surface I went the sample is really tilted um, I can also right click uh, we can do an autofocus in the area here make sure we're locked on a focus first but okay. acquire our information on this next sample that we have on the stage so this sample type was a 0 0.2 for the grinding that was in my grid array so this is this is really just making it easier to to do experiments. It's easier to keep track of them, what what measurements you've you've made or haven't made, be able to see the results of all those experiments in one in one place and look at trends. Yeah, you're right on track. Okay. So not only is it guiding the operator to make sure that they're capturing all the data in the right combination in the form that they want, but it's tracking all the data trends for okay. them and making it easy for them to see those trends and export that data all in a grouping. So now we completed the experiment. We have all six of our images. We can look at the surface average roughness on all six. Okay. And then you can look at the trends by even selecting the heat map here in the software. And you can see that the trend is the lapping was smoother than the grinding side on okay. all of our results. And you can see that by the color codes, the darker red this means a larger value. Okay. So, and you can export all this, I'm assuming, and yeah, that is correct. So, this data can be output to Excel. Okay. And uh, no, I don't want to cancel. Oh, I should save it. <laughs> and then we can output it to Excel. Give it a name. I'll just call it demo. 
and it'll drop all of this information, including all of our measurement values for each individual sample that we took an image on. Okay. And this was, like I said, a very small experiment. And right wouldn't take too much time, but experiments get really large, and that's why tracking and keeping track and experiments can run over days. Yeah, you know, exactly. Save it's, it and reopen it. That, and that to me is kind of the off. kind of the value is more just the kind of the organizational and tracking part of it. Just seems to make life a little, uh, that, a, a lot more simple. That's right. So if you look at, um, let me go to open that Excel document. I'll make sure it opens up on the right window here. I'll show you the data that it threw into the Microsoft Excel output. So it looks very similar to what we had in the software itself. We have our heat map, and then you, that's for surface average information. You have all your main images. Oh, so it creates a tab for each tab of the, uh, OK. Model. So you have all the different area roughness values that we have in the system, not only surface roughness, but like the SQL. Uh, okay. um, SQ values, you also have like the surface valleys, surface peaks, so you can see the different trends okay. of the different process types okay. on all the different measurement trends. Ah. So that all gets sent out to Excel, so it all, groups all the data together for you, so you don't have to have six different Excel documents that you then got to go and get all the information right. put together later on. Yeah. It combines it all together for you. So that's another really good benefit to the smart experiment manager. Now, I'm, I'm assuming also that if you wanted to go back and relook at any of the original uh, images and so forth. You could just what you you could open it right from here. Double click on. Uh, That's um, right. So part of this setup at the beginning, we did say an auto save location. So okay. they are saved in the folder. You can go and open the individual images, or you can do it right from the um, experiment manager here. You can select which image you want to look at. Right click on it and say open with analysis app, and it'll take us right to our analysis software and show you the individual okay. image where you can then render, see the value results, see what your measurement conditions were, look at the overall image okay. if you wanted to save out just the picture cool. of it. And then you can continue. You can do more measurements within the software here. OK. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, this so, this, so this is all, um, this is the 5100. So if, if you already had the OLS 5000, and you wanted these two two features. Could you could you upgrade to the 5100? Yes, you can. That's a great question. So, the smart lens advisor and upgrading the software for 5000s is something they can download and install, and you'd get the smart lens advisor. Oh, okay. But the uh, smart experiment manager with the software feature called uh, Experiment Total Assist. That is a paid software feature. Okay. They can upgrade to it as well. They would just have to reach out to Olympus and talk to the, the local sales rep. They could get them a quotation for adding that software feature to their 5,000 once they upgrade the software. The and and who's, mostly, who's mostly using this? What's, what's the market? The, you know, it is a very, uh, very large range market. Um, obviously, I'm looking at metal samples right now. So there is a lot of metallurgical application here for experiments. But it could be anything from you know, say solar panel, they're looking at different coating techniques on the solar cells, and they run a large experiment for all these different types of coatings or multiple coatings, and they're taking critical width measurements of one of the line paths in a solar cell or something. That could be a useful tool for the smart experiment manager. The smart lens advisor is really driven towards the roughness, okay. so surface roughness, so that's very metallurgical. It's when users need to find the best lens to be advised which the best lens is for your roughness measurement uh, tools in the software. Okay. So it could be anything from automotive where they're looking at uh, surface finishes. Uh, that could be surface finishes for plastics. Um, we get a lot of that just for the touch and feel of the different material that you're holding for commercial use. Yep. They do a lot of uh, imaging on the surface of that material too you know, very small circuits that they need to measure critical dimensions and heights overall on the surface. And they might run uh, an experiment manager running over process time and how the process is applying the material on the circuit. Um, but anybody that's doing any kind of uh, redundant experiment and they need to calculate all that data out, that's yeah. definitely where it could fit the bill. Oh, very cool. Okay, well, we've been looking at the uh, OLS uh, 5100, yeah. uh, the Lext OLS 5100. Uh, Rob, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for the time. Yeah, Appreciate it. Right. Have a good day.